Hello! Why am I such a mess? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. It's your host with the most. My name is Sam, if you happen to be new here, but new or old, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. You can see the sun is now starting to set and we have this hideous, terrible glare coming in right here. So I do apologize for that. In this video, I wanted to sit down and show some appreciation, shine some light. <laughs> on some of the plants that, I don't know how I'm gonna word this just yet, but plants that are saying thank you, plants that are actively thanking me for taking the time, making the time to devote to them, to pull them aside and give them whatever it is that they were needing, whether it be an up potting, whether it be fresh soil, fertilizer, a little snip snip, whatever it may be. Uh, I do have several plants right now that have really just shocked me because as soon as I cared for them and gave them what they were needing, they just, they decided to reward me, which means a lot. It's like plants really do know, right? If we're showing them and feeling that love for them, um, like we should be. And if we're not, and we're just kind of over it and ignoring them, if you're not putting any effort or love into these plants, they really can tell. Uh, just like that experiment where that school, uh, they, they pick two of the same plant, two healthy plants. They put one on one end of the school, the other on the other end. And they specifically told these kids they wanted them to speak very highly of, speak very positively, kindly to the plant on this end. And then they told them they specifically wanted them to basically bully the other plant on the other end, right? really good video really awesome experiment basically that's exactly what the kids did every day they would come in and they would go to the plant on this end the positive plant and they would speak only the most kind positive uplifting words to this plant and then they would go down to the other end and they would just say the most hateful degrading nasty comments to the plant on the other end the bully plant and I don't remember how long this experiment run whether it be uh, 30 days 60 days somewhere in there but at the end of the experiment even though both plants were given the exact same treatment and care watered on the same schedule etc plant, plant that was spoken to positively was flourishing it was growing it was super vibrant and beautiful and the bullied plant believe it or not looked like absolute crap it was starting to die it was wilted it its leaves were yellowing, browning, and it just looked terrible. Nobody likes you. No one notices when you're in the room. You're a mistake. You're useless. Anyways, point being, plants are living creatures and it's definitely been true for me that whenever I'm giving my collection the absolute most in terms of my love and admiration and devotion to caring for them, they definitely thrive as opposed to when I'm feeling maybe a little bit of burnout and I'm just not really putting in that love, pouring that love into them that I normally do. I have several plants that I really want to share with you guys. It's basically like a, an update type video, but uh, I think for just the sake of being different, we're going to call it something along the lines of plants that are currently saying thank you. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, then grab your coffee, your tea, your lemon water, uh, hell, maybe even grab a snack, whatever it is you prefer. Sit down, relax, and let's jump right on into this video. Guys, the first plant that is currently saying thank you is gonna be this incredible, wonderful, beautiful, magical, mystical orchid. Yes, an orchid. This is Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. The blooms are actually known as the dancing lady blooms because they really literally look like a little lady in a frilly dress spinning around. It's pretty spectacular. I bought this plant um, early last year and to be honest with you, I bought it because of the foliage. If you look, um, the foliage is kind of similar to a Phalaenopsis, I guess, I guess, but the growth habit and pattern is completely different. Each new leaf grows in from a little bulb type ordeal, as you can see here, rather than coming out from the middle of the plant. But the foliage itself does kind of resemble a Phalaenopsis, aside from the fact, of course, that it has this gorgeous red model type variegation on 
the leaves like it's really really incredible now this plant has given me a few different new leaves since I've had it but it has never bloomed for me like I said when I first bought it I got it for the foliage but after I did a little bit more research and investigation into the flowers on these it became a goal of mine to try and get this orchid to bloom because it's amazing so I'm gonna put some information up here on the screen about the specifics of these flowers it can grow to be up to a foot or maybe even two foot tall the flower spike itself can before the flower actually comes out and these flowers can last for several months so it's it's pretty special pretty special thing and it's something that most people will take pride in if they own a psychopsis uh, type of orchid uh, if they get it to bloom right so this was living in a very teeny tiny but cute planter for the entirety of its life with me and it was also living in a mix that maybe wasn't the best it was still growing though I will give it that put off probably three different new leaves during that time but it was in a soil mix that it just wasn't perfect for orchids so a couple of months ago you guys I decided to switch all of my orchids out of that mix and put them in a straight orchid mix so this is just straight orchid bark there may be a little bit of cocoa chips in here there's lots of perlite and pumice there's some pumice as well I believe so about two months ago after I repotted this into a a larger planter and gave it a better mix an actual orchid mix I noticed it pushing off what looked like two new growth points well this is the first one so it was in fact a new leaf and at first I kind of thought the other growth point because they do look really similar to the flower spikes in the very beginning stages I thought it was probably another leaf as well so this is its new leaf it just gave me it looks like a little taco still the other one you guys I quickly realized after a couple of weeks after it you know grew a little bit and kept pushing out that this is in fact a flower spike yes this is a flower spike like are you kidding me so I don't want to be too rough with her because I really don't want to mess this up I don't want to like snap the flower spike off or anything like this is so exciting as far as I know from the information I've been able to gather it does take a little while for the flower spike to kind of grow in and actually push out the flower produce the flower at the tip because like I said these typically can grow up to like two foot tall which is pretty crazy it's growing more and more literally by the day every day I check on it lives in my kitchen window getting some really really good sunshine and so it is it's growing little by little every day and I just cannot wait I'm definitely updates on my Instagram if you're not following me there head on over give your girl a follow if you're interested in seeing this um, beautiful flower whenever it finally does push out and open up this is the first plant that is thanking me because not only did I up pot her but I also gave her, her pro a proper mix so freaking exciting to me y'all moving right along the next plant to say a big thank you to me is actually this beautiful incredible Hoya forgive me if I butcher the name I have actually never heard this Hoya pronounced and I tried to look up the pronunciation I couldn't even find a video featuring this Hoya this is a Hoya Trebiana actually had never even heard of this Hoya you guys before I started growing it so this was sent to me in a secret a secret Santa exchange last year I've actually had it for I think July will make a year we did a secret Santa only like in the summertime basically and this was sent to me by uh, another member of this community Morena from Millennial Planter she sent me this adorable little cutting off of her plant and I believe if I'm not mistaken it was these two leaves here and then it did have this vine as well right just these two leaves right here in this vine I actually ended up throwing this in a prop bag like a big ziploc bag into moss and you guys I don't know if anyone else has ever done this actually I do because my girl Kayla was just talking about this in one of her videos she lost a plant and she's like have y'all ever lost a plant like you just don't know where it went so I had it in this prop bag and thank god it was in a sealed humid like moist enclosure or else it 100% would have died but I lost it I had it setting somewhere I thought on a shelf under some grow lights and I just happened to think about it like I hadn't seen it in a couple of months and I just happened to think about it I'm like because I was like potting up some a couple of the other cuttings she sent me or something and I was like 
wait a minute. <laughs> she sent me an insanely cool Hoya. Where is that bag? And so I began looking and looking and looking and guys, I could not find this bag. Well, a couple of weeks, maybe even a month later, we were cleaning. We were doing like a deep cleaning and my husband like moved my shelf or he, I think he actually might have took down that big metal stand that I had here, took it down because I wanted to replace it with something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And lo and behold, the freaking bag of moss with this Hoya Trebuana was under the shelf. So somehow it had gotten knocked off the shelf and was underneath of it where I, out of sight, out of mind. And I was like, oh my gosh, there it is. There's the bag. And so, and it had been in this bag for like probably six months, seven months. I don't know. A long, long time. Way too long. And it was rooted. It was rooted. And I was like, okay, I have to get it out of here. I was just so thankful that it was healthy. The moss was still like it wasn't like totally crispy basically it was pretty dry um and so i decided to pot this plant up so i potted it up and it lives on the top shelf in my grow tent right under that mars hydro and would you just look at her now i am so so proud and it's like ever since i found that plant and i gave it a proper home i gave it the light that it need i have been fertilizing all my plants look at her now so as you can see she shot off this entirely new vine right here this brand new stem right here this is all new off of the the base stem the main stem just look for the first leaf she gave me with was this one and i mean i just really really am loving this hoya you guys because look at it the leaves are so large and they're also super they have like a very shiny look to them i just think it's incredible it's a very unique hoya it's definitely one that i don't ever hear talked about like i said i'd never heard about this plant until I opened my package and I seen it and she told me what it was. It put off this new leaf right here first and then the next new leaf it gave me was this little funky one and then I think it might have put off these two at the same time I can't remember and I thought these two leaves were like a good size you know but it just now like they're still soft they haven't hardened off yet and this one's actually still growing um this one maybe as well for all i know so i need to be careful right it just put off these two gorgeous leaves and this stem just continues to grow and i know you're probably not going to be able to see super well but right here there's actually two itty bitty baby hoya leaves um that have came in they're already there if we can get her to bloom like that's just like icing on the cake this is number two that I wanted to brag on just a little bit. I am so incredibly ecstatic, like absolutely ecstatic over this, okay? And if you watched my previous video about this, then you're gonna know why. So, so I can't remember if it was a video live stream or both. Oh my gosh. So this is my incredible philodendron jose bueno oh also you guys i got a new chair i don't have to sit in the floor anymore a little office chair it is wonderful my back and my booty don't have to hurt anymore okay so let's take him out of his cash po so basically if we look at all of the beautiful foliage on this guy he used to have the most incredible variegation longest time when i had him he had the most gorgeous variegation just his leaves some of them were like all this creamy color right I mean it was just amazing beautiful every leaf looked different it looked literally looked like you took a paintbrush to each leaf and just made some type some kind of like incredible painting on his foliage it was amazing I've always loved this plant so at some point last year I actually chopped it I sold the base of the plant with that had like three really beautifully variegated leaves and I took the top portion with multiple other leaves and the growth point for myself I rooted it and then I potted it back up. So after it started growing, once I cut it, I just started to notice that more and more of the, the new leaves coming in had more green and less variegation. Um, so the variegation just became very, very subtle. Like you can see a few splashes here and there on some of these leaves. But for the most part, he just kind of stopped producing variegation. And so I had up potted him into a little bit bigger of a planter. I can't remember if it's a video on my channel or if it was a live stream, but I was talking about him and showing him and just sharing and expressing my love for him. And um, I mentioned the fact that, you know, he has basically reverted. I thought it was too late to try and prevent that, try and stop that or reverse it. 
I thought it was too late to like chop him back or something and try to get him to push out more variegation, right? And so I had said that I just accepted him for what he was. Like, yes, I miss the variegated leaves, but the plant is so beautiful that I still love it just as much in its green form. That's what I said. I shined his leaves, repotted him, shined his leaves, and was just gushing over him basically. And so what do you know, you guys? I just noticed a couple of days ago, I was checking on the new leaf. I seen he was pushing out a new leaf. And look at this. Is this a joke? Is this a joke? I mean, compare it to all his previous leaves. He no longer, this is his last leaf right here, you guys. It's green. It's basically completely green. And then out of nowhere, after I spend time publicly gushing over him and talking about just how much love I had for him, regardless if he was variegated or not anymore, how beautiful he was, I repotted him, I shined his leaves. I was just really, really admiring this plant and making it very well known that I admire this plant. This is like the biggest thank you boom okay because there's nothing that I could have done like some of these plants it's like oh okay I up potted them I gave them the correct living conditions I gave them the correct you know I like took physical steps to encourage them to give me new beautiful leaves or blooms or whatever it may be but with this plant I did do those things but I didn't chop it back I didn't there's nothing that I did to encourage this gorgeous spectacular variegated leaf um, now you can see most of the leaf is green we have some flecking like here and here I mean there's flecking all over but this is the most right here this is the most variegation I have had on this plant since I chopped it and sold the base of it since he started to revert this is the most variegation that I have had and I just I can't, couldn't believe it I seen that and I'm like oh my gosh honestly it's just that along with all these other plants has really just encouraged me to make the time like I am NOT allowing burnout to be an option I love taking care of my plants but since we moved into this space it's just like I haven't had a proper workspace I haven't had the proper just space in general to do what I need to do. I don't have like a full on plant room now that I can just go into and, you know, do plant chores, inspect them every day. Like I don't have that. So, but regardless, I will when we buy our house, okay? But regardless, like it's important that I make the time just to put the love, the same love that I had for many years into my plants still to this day because I still love them the same and I still, you know, get so excited whenever things like this happen. I talked about it. I, I gushed over him just the way he was and he decided to bless me with the most beautiful variegation that I have seen in probably close to a year now you guys at this point. Lodendra and Jose Bueno that I thought was reverted has given me a gorgeous variegated leaf you guys. This one was literally featured in like two or three video videos ago and we repotted him because he was shipped to me in a very small little nursery pot. And I mean it wasn't necessarily very small but for the size of the plant and the root system it was quite small. And I was like oh I think maybe he would look pretty cool if I put him in this hanging basket right and so um, I did it and I loved it and he's been living you know hanging in my grow tent ever since um, and that was just a couple of weeks ago now he may have very well been pushing out this leaf like I'm sure he had the the growth point he was like rolled up in the catafil whenever I was filming that video um, I probably even said like oh he's gonna put out a new leaf like look but regardless had him for a couple few weeks at this point and it hadn't pushed out a new leaf right after I repotted him look and it's still not even fully unfurled yet oh my gosh this is such a gorgeous plant I didn't even say what this is this guy is formerly known as philodendron superbum um, but it's been reclassified renamed and it now goes by bear with me philodendron barnopausii something like that okay you know it just I think it's pretty telling that it didn't put out the leaf for a few weeks after it shipped to me and like days after I up potted it it now has 
successfully pushed out and unfurled this beautiful new leaf. I really appreciate this larger leaf shape with these lobes. It reminds me of my philodendron adipopoensi a little bit, maybe a little bit like my Mexicanum. These super dark glossy leaves with this lightning bolt green, almost neon uh, vein going down through the leaves. It's truly, truly a gorgeous plant. And just seeing this new leaf here, I mean, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. I swear it almost looks neon. It looks like it could, gl it could glow in the dark, doesn't it? We're going to call him Philodendron Superbum. Is thanking me with his adorable new leaf. So I think it's safe to say I made the correct decision in up-potting him and putting him in this lovely hanging basket. Okay, we have a Calathea, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, there's not a lot to see here. However, I am extremely excited about this plant, okay? And this thank you that I'm receiving from her. But I believe this is a philodendron, or shoot. I believe this is a Calathea zabrina. Initially, I thought it was the war, war's wick or however you say it because it had really large leaves and it looked a little bit different from my Zabrina but basically this plant did wonderful it was a very easy going Calathea just like my Zabrina so y'all help me figure out that it's probably definitely a Zabrina so we're gonna call her a Zabrina it did wonderful I never had any issues with like crisping or yellowing or anything I mean it was a very um easy going Calathea grew beautifully it was just a wonderful plant joy to grow I'm gonna be honest with you after we moved into this home that we're currently in there's a lot less light our apartment was lit up with big giant south facing windows it was incredible we moved here we did not have enough light here i had to um, over time get more and more grow lights and things like that because we just didn't have enough light for my plants and so a lot of my plants did take a hit after we moved here I'm not gonna lie and this was one of them. So this passed, it was like at the end of summer, beginning of fall. Uh, this was living in my bathroom, it was doing fine. And all of a sudden I noticed all of her leaves were dying, crisping up and dying. And I was so sad and I noticed it had been a couple months since it given, had given me a new leaf. Now you'll notice here these big tall guys that are all sorts and kinds of jacked up. These are the remaining old leaves. Um, these leaves obviously have damage, but I did not remove them because like I said, it had been months since it give, had given me a new leaf and I really just didn't want to have to cut it all the way back because I wasn't sure if it was going to come back. So I left these uggy leaves on here and I just kept taking care of her. Honestly, I just kept watering her. I fertilized her. I, you know, if she got spider mites, I would treat her and I left these leaves on. I recently moved it a little bit closer to a grow light so I moved it and I just like I said I kept caring for her and watering her and what do you freaking know I noticed that this teeny tiny little sprout coming up from the base of the pot holy crap it was a brand new leaf after at least eight months of giving me zero growth no growth whatsoever eight months this plant was basically dormant lo and behold it had a new leaf there had been many times where I thought like okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna get rid of it I'm gonna throw it out it's never gonna come back but I wouldn't allow myself every time I would talk myself out of it I'm like no I'm just gonna have faith that she's gonna come back like I could easily just purchase another healthy much fuller Calathea Zabrina if I truly wanted one you know for pretty inexpensive reasonably priced I don't know if y'all are like this but I'm sure some of you are I definitely form these connections with my plants so I don't want to just like toss out my plant that I loved because it's not doing the best and buy another one which I have I definitely have replaced plants like that don't get me wrong but I'd rather not and there's certain plants that have hold a special place in my heart even more than others and so it's even more difficult for me to just throw it away and also as a plant parent there's just something so special and definitely rewarding about almost killing a plant or you know in going through all these struggles with a plant and putting in that time and effort and care to try and bring it back to health and then it comes back to you when it comes back for you still can't describe what that feeling is exactly but yeah it's just like look what i done like i was patient i waited it out i kept caring for you and i'm a very impatient person so if there's one thing that collecting house plants has taught me the number one thing is 100 percent patience she's now since put off two more little leaves and now she has three new leaves i know it looks 
ridiculous but I am going to remove these older leaves I really just wanted to leave them on there so that she could still photosynthesize so there's still some chlorophyll in the plant to be able to take in sunlight once she establishes herself a little bit more then I will go ahead and remove these stalks right here I'm hopeful that this summer she's gonna live her best life okay I just have to show you guys this like I didn't actually do anything other than I did re repot this. This is my Monstera Albo. I repotted it this past winter because it desperately needed it. And it did reward me at the time by pushing out, you know, new leaves. Like, how cute. And look at this one. But honestly, he needs a moss pole very, very badly or some type of support pole very badly. He also has these big aerial roots that are just dying to to grab a hold of something and climb so i'm gonna get him a pole this is his newest leaf well it's still in the process it feels like of hardening off it's not completely hardened off but look how gorgeous that is granted it doesn't have any fenestrations but i don't even care it's still bigger than the last and look at all of that variegation y'all haven't seen this plant in a while and i'm so proud of him and i just love him so much i thought that new leaf was really really wonderful I do want to show some appreciation to my big bad boy over here my monstera deliciosa uh because i know i did show it in my chore video but I just want to like throw the camera on him really quickly uh, because I am very proud of him and he is saying a big thank you. He was incredibly root bound. His roots were coming out the top of the soil. It was just a mess and he stopped growing, hadn't given me a new leaf in at least two months. And you I mean, you guys seen the struggle that I had trying to repot him. I went through hell and back, <laughs> to be honest with you, getting him out of that pot. But not only that, the pot that I had to move him up to was ended up not being large enough, which I did not figure out until I tried to, I took him out of his nursery pot and tried to set him down in it. Well, I quickly discovered that he was not going to fit into that pot. Unfortunately, I did not have any other planters that were bigger than that one to put him in. I had to go out the following morning to my Lowe's and find a pot that would hopefully be big enough for him, come back home and get him potted up in his new home. Literally, you guys, days, anywhere from, to, from two to five days after I moved him up to this big pot, immediately, boom, out busted these two brand new leaves out of the petioles. I was shook absolutely shook and I'm just so proud of him and I'm glad that I did decide to go ahead and take on that tedious chore of repotting him because obviously it paid off it was so worth it I have one more plant that I wanted to talk about it is a begonia maculata whitei if you couldn't tell and oh my gosh would you just look at all of her new leaves you guys it's amazing so um Basically, I had a Begonia Maculata whitey eye um, a good while ago, a couple years ago, can't remember exactly how long, and that plant hated me. It never did well for me. It never grew. Like, it rarely ever put off a new leaf. It was constantly losing leaves, died, it, it's gone, and I kind of swore off the Maculata whitey eye, which is weird. It's bizarre because I've never really struggled with other cane types of begonias. I do pretty well with them. So I was like, what in the world? And the Maculata, that's just like one that I was, you know, really head over heels in love with. I thought it was just such a gorgeous begonia. And I was pretty sad at the fact that I couldn't keep it alive. I was like, my gosh. I ended up getting another one um, last year at some point probably middle to late last year. And this is her. Yeah, I don't know, I didn't help myself. You know, they were popping up everywhere from Costa Farms. And so this one was healthy looking. It was affordable and so I picked it up. Honestly, I've had an entirely different experience with this one. I will say at first, the first couple of months, it really didn't grow, but it maintained itself. You know, I was fertilizing um, and staying on top of the watering because they definitely are very thirsty. I decided to put it here in this window which gets some decent you know decent sunlight honestly I just noticed this plant really started to thrive when I set her in this window but you can see I mean new leaf, new leaf, new leaf, new leaf. it absolutely loves its spot these are new leaves it loves its spot in the window you guys it loves it on top here, new leaf, here on the base level. I mean, there's just so many on here that I couldn't even count. She is just like popping off. And it just makes me so happy because I really didn't have that much faith in myself when it comes to the the Maculata Whitey Eye. I'm just gonna let her 
stay living there where she has been and continue doing what I've been doing. Uh, maybe this summer I will get around to repotting her, but I honestly don't see the point because she's doing so well. Like it doesn't seem like she's in a rush to be repotted. So kind of just leaving her be. All right, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Yeah, that's it. I just wanted to shine some light and um, if we're being honest, I kind of wanted to brag on these plants since they were already saying thank you uh, in their own little way. I wanted to, uh, you know, brag on them and hype them up so they'll maybe continue doing what they're doing and growing and being happy. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Be sure and give this video a thumbs up if you happen to like it. And other than that, I'll see y'all again very, very soon in my next video.